top of the Tourmalet in southwestern France. Good day, you cracking humans. Legends, it is absolutely Arctic monkeys out here this morning. It's absolutely freezing in Melbourne, but uh, I'm off to work. Got a, uh, a couple of little projects to do this morning, so hopefully, get a ride in later this Arvo. All right, this morning I am, I thought I had a meeting at 11.15 for my day job. And it turns out I've actually got the meeting at quarter to eight. So uh, it's, I'm an hour late for it, it's 9.44 now. I'm literally an hour late. This girl's been sitting there waiting for me for an hour. And I feel horrendous. Being late sucks. I think you guys know that um, I'm quite often late. I'm quite often late to a lot of things. And uh, I think it's if there's one area of my life that I would want to improve and work on, it's being punctual because it's really disrespectful to the other person when you're late to uh, to things. Oh, there's nothing worse than being late, being stuck in traffic. Tears, tears. Alright, so I'm roughly an hour and a half late for this meeting so far. I'm, I've been sitting in traffic for nearly 45 minutes to an hour. But uh, I'm in the city, I'm just probably 10 minutes away from the meeting. And uh, hopefully there's two people waiting for me from a company that I've never met before. So, this is awesome. So in the end, I was about an hour and a half to hour and 45 minutes late to that meeting. Um, Tanya and Darren were waiting for me. Fortunately, they had some stuff to do on their computer. But mental note, no more being late. That is my, that is my 2016 and a half years resolution. No more being late. So I just did a, uh, an operation. Uh, I was in with a a very prominent surgeon uh, in Melbourne, uh, Val Yusatov, he's one of the senior surgeons here at Western Health. And we're just gonna ask him a few questions and have a chat with him. So Val, um, you obviously, I, I, I follow you on Strava and you're banging out the Ks on that, what is that machine that you're riding on? Uh, it's a, a spin bike, it's a Kaiser, the Kaiser spin bike. Yeah, yeah. Which is a, a gym bike that I set up at home just to give me access to riding during the week when it's hard to get out in the yeah. mornings and nights. Yeah. Uh, so I can keep up with my mates on the weekend. So you're a, you're a very busy surgeon at Western Health, one of the senior surgeons here. Uh, um, I mean, obviously we know surgeons, doctors, they work a lot of hours. You're very time poor. How do you get the case in? And you've lost a lot of weight over the last year. Yeah, last sort of two or three years, I've started doing more riding. So the weekends, really, I, I'll do try to do 100 k's on a Saturday um, on Beach Road usually, then 60 k's through Eltham on a Sunday. Um, that's not enough. So I'll usually do two or three spin sessions during the week as well. Yeah, I've been trying to get you down to the races for I don't know how long now, but I, I see uh, I see you doing on on Strava all the fondos and whatnot. You know, do you see yourself getting into racing or do you like the fondos? Look, the fondos are good because they give you something, give me something to aim for. So yeah. if I sign up for Amy's ride, for example, which I've done, um, it sets a target for me to do my training towards. Yeah. So that's, and the ride itself is good fun, but it's the preparation that uh, is important yeah. for me, the motivation to do that. Yeah. Do you follow any uh, specific training regime? Is there any books that you read? or how, I mean, how do you know what to do? Yeah, I've read a lot of magazines, yeah. uh, watching your blog. Um, the I paid him to say that. GCN have um, information. There's Train a Road have sort of programs. But it's what I can get in. So I'll do, I'll alternate between high cadence, low power sessions 
or low cadence, high um, wattage sessions, interval sessions. I just mix it up. Yeah. It doesn't get too boring. Yeah. And as a surgeon, obviously, you know, I have my crash on my bike. And ever since having my crash, I've had all these people sending me through messages and emails saying they've had a crash, they've broken their wrist, whatnot. I mean, you know, as a surgeon over the years, I mean, obviously, you're, you know, more so in uh, general surgery these days. But what, you know, what do you... What do you think? Uh, do you, are you seeing a lot of cyclists coming in for surgery? And Not a lot, but it's the most common question or comment that I hear when I tell people that I cycle. They say, oh, you're crazy, you're going to get crashed. And there's the old saying, there's two types of cyclists, those that have crashed and those that are yet to crash. Um, but it, there's danger in everything we do, and I think you've got to balance what you get out of it versus the risks. Yep. So you've got to stay safe. Try to avoid heavy traffic, yeah. go early in the mornings, wear all the safety gear. Yeah. Um, but yes, I expect I will crash it. I've had a few minor, more embarrassing crashes and, <laughs> and serious crashes. But Staying uh, clipped in at the lights. Yeah, that sort of stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's bruise your ego more than your, your bum. A lot of people break their wrists in those situations. Yeah, you know, I was conscious of that because yeah. it's, it's a low, slow motion fall and yeah. you, you don't get time to... So I was conscious of breaking something but I didn't which is lucky yeah yeah um, but people you know hurt themselves mountain you know skiing skiing's a popular nobody complains about skiing being dangerous yet it's probably more major accidents happen in skiing than in cycling um, I think you just got to be sensible and accept the risks yeah what do you think of the state of affair with you know obviously you you travel all over the world as a surgeon uh, do, what do you think of this, the state of affairs with cycling in Australia and the safety and the, you know, the, the relationship between cyclist and, and driver? Yeah, I think mostly it's good, mm. but there are certainly some bad um, drivers and bad cyclists that give both a bad name. So there are still some crazy guys on Beach Road, for example, that are running red lights and riding four or five abreast and taking up all two lanes, and, and that gives everybody a bad name. Um, and there are cyclists who are throwing things at, I mean, motorists who are throwing things at cyclists and cutting them off and flashing them and stuff, and that gives them a bad name as well. So I think you've just got to, as a cyclist, you've got to obey the rules, try to stay out of the motorist's way as much as possible, and try to cooperate. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously you work, being a general surgeon, you see a lot of large patients, a lot of over, overweight patients, obese patients. Do you advocate any particular diet? I mean, what are you telling these people? And is it frustrating as a surgeon? Sort of, I mean, yeah, but, it's frustrating because everybody knows. There's nobody watching this that wouldn't know that if you exercise more and eat less, you lose weight. It's a pretty simple equation. Yet people are surprised to hear that and have enormous trouble doing it and for lots of reasons obviously um, but you can do it I did it I lost about 20 kilos yeah. over a two year period just yeah. by eating a bit less and exercising a bit more yeah I still go out and have a drink and I still like dessert and chocolates and but you just got to moderate it and be yeah. sensible yeah but people have a lot of trouble doing that and they end up with secondary problems arthritis, heart, you know, heart problems, blood pressure, etc., etc., um, And the solution to it all is their weight. Yep. I mean, obviously, uh, you're very, very, uh, you know, it's a big part of your daily job to, you know, operate on people who are obese and overweight. Um, in, the, in the medical industry, and, and particularly in your world, is there a lot of, obviously, you know, there's a lot of plant-based talk on the internet you know a lot of people not eating meat vegans eating a lot of plants is there literature coming out that a plant-based diet is a better diet oh look that's not really my area of expertise but mm. there's certainly the things that get popularity with that michael mosley 5-2 diet that got a lot of traction with people and some of my colleagues have been doing that so i think people still like people that i hang around with like to eat meat and like to have a glass of wine uh, but they're certainly more conscious of things like the 5-2 diet and cutting back. So I don't know many people that are totally vegan or, or vegetarians. Yeah. But you can hear even my young 
daughter who's, who's 14 is talking more about these things that she sees on um, Instagram and and her friends are talking about vegan and vegetables and so I think it's getting traction yep yep you know obviously uh, there's I don't know if you've heard of Durian Rider and Freely uh, on, on uh, you know they're obviously plant-based you know, I mean, do you do you do you watch YouTube and see these guys? Well, look, I watch I watch your channel, Mark. Obviously, <laughs> who doesn't? Um, and yeah, I see a Durian Rider pops up occasionally, and he's a bit of a a, a nut. I was going to, if he sees this, he'll he'll troll me, I'm sure. Um, but he's got extreme views, and that's fine. He's pushing his extreme views and and making a living doing that. But I think people have to be sensible. And, you know, to be totally vegetarian is not going to work for everybody. But I think a, a predominant vegetarian diet is probably a good thing. Yeah. So you obviously you say you watch Durian Rider, you watch my channel, you, you mentioned GCN a little while ago. What do you think in the state of the uh, internet and, you know, news and media and stuff? How are we going with cycling in Australia? Are we, are we all covering it pretty well? I think it's interesting. I was talking to somebody last night about um, the changing role of media. So people are looking to YouTube, for example, or the internet to find the media that they want and not necessarily be force-fed what Channel 7 or Channel 9 wants to give them. Um, and that's where YouTube, I guess, fills that gap. So people can find exactly what they want to watch, uh, whatever niche fishing show or cycling show that they want to follow. Um, and the fact that, you know, little startup uh, vlogs like yourself can get 10,000 subscribers is a testament to that people are looking out for those sort of products. Mm. So I think there's a niche for it and I think it'll grow. And I think the big, the mainstream channels will will probably start feeling the pinch more and more. There's more, particularly as the advertising dollar moves specifically to YouTube and to Instagram and so on. Yeah, yeah. Well, Val, the next time we have this conversation or the next conversation, I want to be vlogging it from our bikes down Beach Road. All right, deal. All right, done deal. All right, I'm just, I've just left work. It's getting pretty late in the day now. I'm heading over to meet up with uh, the orthotics guy, Jason, and we're gonna put his specially designed wrist brace on my wrist, just for riding and things like that, just so I don't break, re-break it again. <laughs> so you've ridden from France? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Where are you headed? Uh, Melbourne. Uh, and then where? Then Sydney? Uh, Sydney. Yeah. Sydney, Cranbourne. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Bye. How awesome is that? They've just ridden from France and riding to Melbourne. I love that. I would love to quit my job and go do that. And then post. You couldn't post videos every day. Well, couldn't post, post videos regularly anyway. You? Yeah. Yes. So I made a great video with Jason in it, and he hasn't even watched the video yet. Uh, I'm man. like, bad man. Unreal. This guy, this guy. I just left Jason's place, but he's given me a. Uh, an orthotics uh, brace that I have to wear. He said to me, I have to wear it for the next few weeks as much as possible. And um, not in the shower and not to bed, but as much as possible so that it heals properly. Apparently it takes eight weeks for a bone to heal properly. And it's only been about, well, it's probably been six weeks for me, but you know, I took my cast off early and things like that. So anyway, we'll see. I'll try to wear it as much as possible and uh, should be good to go pretty soon. This is pretty comfortable, so I should be able to wear it on the bike, hopefully, because the last thing I'd need is to come off the bike. That would kill me, and then have to go through all this again. All right, you legends, that is the end of the day. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That is the end of the day for to What? That is the end of the day. Uh, I'm chilling out. I'm just editing this video now, if you can see that. That's a pretty rude shot of me pulling some sort of head. But um, it was really good to have Val on the show today. Um, 
He's a very, very well-respected surgeon. There's a lot of surgeons who really admire Val's work. So, you know, in terms of surgeons, he's up there and he's just a generally, just a great bloke and uh, rides a bike and just, just a good, good, easy bloke to talk to and very, very smart. So uh, I enjoyed that today. But um, that is the end of the vlog. If you guys have got any questions for Val, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer them uh, below. And uh, yeah, that'll be it for the day. So until tomorrow, what am I going to do tomorrow? Not sure yet, but I'm going to uh, Sydney on Thursday and I should be there for four days. And I'm actually doing a work conference, which I'm not sure what I'm going to do for content, but we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Um, but uh, until then, see you guys tomorrow. Also, I forgot to mention Ryan. Uh, we he interviewed Ryan. He was doing that uh, straight ride from Melbourne to Sydney. Excuse me. He, um, I actually did a cheeky little interview, which I'll include a snippet of tomorrow. But he didn't quite make it. It was really cold. It was minus two degrees and he had to pull out. But we did a post-ride interview and I'll put a snippet of that in, uh, in tomorrow's vlog. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then.